So it's been a while since I last did this, but we're back to uh, the usual uh, replay review format for this deck. We're playing Carol Rune, and the reason why we're playing Carol Rune is because, um, as a uh, Princess Connect fan myself, and also a fan of Carol in general, I couldn't pass up the chance to experience playing her. So we're gonna be playing uh, this Nature Carol Rune deck. So, um, this deck mainly has two win conditions. You have Riley, who uh, invokes after you've uh, played uh, seven trees. It, note that it says played, not like left play or whatever. It's played. And then um, she gets uh, when when she comes into play, she gains the amount of she gains attack equal to the number of trees, which means she will come out with eight attack when you invoke her. And she has storm, so uh, you can involve her for a nice ten damage phase. And then um, Carol's uh, effect is that. On fanfare, she reduces enemies' max defense by 5, and then her union burst deals 5 damage on born 5 damage to face, basically, is what it says. So, um, you can see the combo here is, um, invoke Riley, evolve her, play Carol, and then uh, drop your opponent's health to 10, and then punch them in the face of Riley. So that's like the, uh, the standard OTK strategy for this deck, but of course, it's not the most consistent thing ever to do that every time, so they have the other ways you can win the game are uh, you can either uh, use 2 turns worth of Riley Storm for example you do 8 damage or like 10 damage in one turn and then you can finish them off uh, the next turn because um, while, after she invokes you can continue to play trees during your turn so the next one invokes with more attack or you can just play 3 carols and win so the 3 carol uh, most decks don't have an answer to this I'm pretty sure I think about blood is probably the only thing that has, an, has a way out or maybe like the uh, Steadfast Samurai for Sword, but other than stuff like that, basically this card, uh, <laughs> you play it three times your opponent dies because um, the first one will reduce them to 15, second one reduce them to 10, and then the Union Burst plus the Fanfare will kill them on the third one. So that's the uh, main win conditions for the deck. Um, Mysterian Project is an interesting include for this deck. Um, one thing you can do is clone Carol so you can reach your Exodia of three Carols, but the other... Uh, Roll this for fields is that if you need more trees, you can clone one of your tree generators. If you need uh, more board clear, you can clear, you can clone stuff like Apex Elemental, Aeroman Aerial Elementalist. So you have a lot of options you can clone uh, with Mysterian Project, not just Carol. So there's that that's worth noting. And then we also have Mysterian Wisdom, which will put Riley back, so you can actually have a way to put Invokes back in the deck. So yeah, that's gonna be the uh, list we're playing today, and let's just jump into some games. So our first game for today will be against Rune, and we are going second here. While we are playing this uh, Mysteria, uh, not Mysteria, this uh, Nature Carol deck, it's more likely the opponent's just playing cool on, so we uh, definitely need to uh, watch out for that. Um, for the Mulligan, I like to just. I just kept one tree generator and just prioritize generating trees. Uh, I'm not sure if you should keep be keeping Carol, but uh, since I didn't get offered Carol this time, it doesn't really matter, so we just look for tree generators. Um, the tree cost tree generators aren't as uh, enjoyable to play, so I usually look for two cost. Uh, Traveler's Respite is a bit lower priority in terms of tree generators to keep in the mulligan because you want to use it later game for your heal, but since I didn't get offered any others, I just kept Traveler's Respite there. So at this turn, uh, we have no good tree generators, so we just go ahead and play the Traveler's Respite. There's no reason to play this tree, there's no reason to not play this tree, so we just hold on to it for now. And you can see the magic missile and the uh, Clark, so this is definitely going to be cool on rune here. So uh, we can go ahead and play the tree here, and then we have passionate potion here. Uh, tree cost generators are can be difficult to find time to play them, so um, being able to play on tree is pretty nice here. And then we just go ahead and play the tree here again. No, 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 no real difference whether you play the tree or not here. And here's the verdict ritual. It's gonna go ahead and clear our uh, guy, which is fine. We don't really need him alive or anything. And here we draw Desert Pathfinder, so this is a nice uh, pick up here, I guess. Maybe not that good, but I mean... We go ahead and play the Arcane Aether here, play uh, Nature and Great Tree. And then we pick up the Carol here, so we don't want to use that. And here you see I didn't play a Desert Pathfinder, and I played the Arrow Mentalist here. The reason being is that for Desert Pathfinder, um, in this deck you have a lot of cards that bounce the uh, trees, because um, Runes, a uh, nature art package only cares about number played, not number destroyed, so um, even if you bounce them, it still helps towards your count. So, we have a lot of stuff like Apex Elemental, it returns ammo to your hand and deals 2 damage to any fuller. With the tree, you do 3 damage instead. So, because you have ways to bounce, if you look at Desert Pathfinder's last words, 
uh, it only activates if there is no uh, Nateran Great Tree in play. So um, by saving this next turn, what we can do is we can play a Desert Pathfinder, evolve it, play the tree, and then bounce the uh, tree while clearing board so that uh, when he dies, he'll summon out another tree so we can maintain a card draw that way. So definitely important interaction to remember for this deck. Generally, uh, Riley's Invoke will happen on turn 7 going second, turn 8 going first if it's ideal situation. Like, if you want to get your Carol OTK out, um, turn 7 is the earliest going second. Uh, turn 8 is the earliest going first, so we can look out for that here. Right now, we're only at 3 trees played, so um, we, we are kind of looking at a uh, turn 7 Invoke here pretty cleanly. There's the uh, Chaos uh, Builder from my opponent, that's fine, they're gonna go ahead and play uh, uh, Hopefully they play followers when we get to target, because in fact Elemental, the annoying thing about it is that it does require you to have a target level enemy follower to use it. But thankfully they do play it, so we're gonna do that. Okay, there's a Pathfinder Evolve here. And then we go ahead and use the uh, Apex Elemental here. Here I choose to bounce uh, the... Uh, I think we clear the Demon Caller here so I can trade off my Desert Pathfinder to leave my board empty. Um, mainly it is to make sure that when they play Followers, they won't trade it off so I have targets for Apex Elemental. But also maybe if they are trying to trade stuff like Demon Callers, uh, Demonic Shikigami and stuff like that, we can deny them the targets to do it by doing this way. And then we'll get the tree, so we can go ahead and play the tree here, go into our deck. The arrow mental is here, it's nice. But we are at uh, 4, 5 trees played now, so uh, we can just have to play 2 trees here. There's a Chaos Wheel there, and my opponent clones probably a cool one, I don't really know if that's a traditional sorcerer. So, um, this traditional sorcerer is an interesting position because um, now they have a war. It. So, um, if I let the traditional sorcerer live, well, okay, I should probably cut to so this one is actually quite, quite difficult because I need to play two trees. Uh, the most efficient way to do that is just to play this tree and then I can eat and play tree. If, that, if I do that, I have four, uh, four PP to work with. I also need to evolve one more follower for Carol's uh, Union Burst to go down to uh, seven by next turn. So uh, my goal for this turn is to evolve a follower and play two trees. So I need to play at least one follower. So we can play an uh, element. Uh, the uh. Arrow, Elementalist, can play Fashion or Potion or whatever, but the problem with this is that ideally I want to unlock their board here because um, Huon does have a decent amount of wards compared to most other decks, so um, like giving them board space to play Huon and make wards would be annoying for me, so um, here, uh, I can't, there's no, I mean you can think about this if you want, but I thought about it quite a, bit, quite a long time and I'm pretty sure there is no good way to uh, or lock them while preventing them from getting two wards. The magic number for wards for against this deck is two. Once they have two wards, you can't clear it because Flash of Heroes will only get you through one ward, and you need to evolve Riley so you can't evolve Carol. So um, because there is no good way for me to board lock them while achieving the invoke condition here for me, I just decided I'll play it safe and clear this board so that even if I don't manage to get an OTK mid turn, I can st I'm still uh, in position to survive and look for an OTK the following turn. So we're going to clear this board just to be safe. Once again, we keep our board empty. Just, I mean, honestly, there's no reason to keep our board empty at this point, but I don't really want them to have to really do things like play, play cool and then trade the Shiki Gami, trade the small Shiki Gami and play like something else, which would be annoying. So uh, here my opponent plays cards in the wrong order, thankfully for me. So this is a lot of truth here. It's fine, they go ahead and evolve and hit face. So at this point, they only uh, put out one ward so they are just dead next turn but um, obviously that was a misplay from them if they knew what they were doing they should probably have played traditional sorcerer first and then played demonic Gami. Um so I will talk a bit about uh, why what would happen I guess if they would do that if they would do that this would have ward right so um, obviously I wouldn't be able to get lethal this time because they'll have two wards so what I can do there is actually just play Carol and evolve Carol and clear their board use Carol to clear their board and then just hit face with Riley and play something like a uh, Apex Elemental to clear this uh, Zella of Truth. Um, Kuon doesn't have healing, so if I play Carol, I put them down to 15 health, I clear their whole board, and then I hit them for an 8 with the uh, Riley here, which puts them down at 7, which means my next Riley can kill them. So all I had to do is uh, look for ways to clear their board next turn, which I mean, with Arrow Elemental, we have trees to draw, we'll have Clash of Heroes, so they will have a decent amount of answers. 
uh, next turn. So even though they misplayed here, I don't really think uh, it mattered that much unless they managed to pull out 13 damage and kill me. But uh, who knows? But if they misplayed here, we can just go ahead and finish that off here. So we go ahead and evolve Riley. Carol will put him down to 15. I'm put him down to 10. And then use Clash of. Oh, he can use Apex Elemental as well to clear the uh, Shikigami here and then hit face. So a nice, uh, clean. Well, not, not that clean, but this is the standard OTK strategy. Our next game here will be against Sword. We are going second again, apparently, but I guess that's just how it works. Uh, no good tree generators in hand, so I believe I just toss everything here. Yeah. Oh, I kept the Pyromancer, so I guess since I'm playing against Sword, I want to have a way to. Uh, clear whiteboards because um, this deck is susceptible to aggro, so keeping Pyromancer is probably actually a good idea. Pick up Desert Pathfinder here, which we can use to get a tree, so that's nice. It's There's the Leon. So here is uh, the first decision, I guess, between Geo Elementalist and Desert Pathfinder. Um, for me, for now, I don't really see a good play. I might want to save Desert Pathfinder for my Evo turn, so I go ahead and play Geo Elementalist instead. I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's what I chose to do. This is like a Leon, so we don't know if this ambush or this evil. Uh, ambush can will probably be quite annoying, so we don't. Or I mean, we have Pyromancer, I guess, which is kind of a way to carry it. But hopefully, uh, we have uh, do that before the Leon's get really big. So we go ahead and hit face here and just play trees. That's the Aether, so this is going to be evil sword. Can we go ahead and trade their Leon off, which is fine. So here, uh, we go ahead and play Desert Pathfinder here. I leave one Leon alive, but uh, saving Pyromancer for next turn is probably a little bit better, in my opinion, at least. That's why I thought when I did this. So we go ahead and use the Apex Elemental to clear the Aether here. We go ahead and trade the Desert Pathfinder in this way. Uh, when the Desert Pathfinder dies, he will summon a tree. There's the Leon Evo here. Hopefully they, I mean, they can probably ambush the Leon if they want to. I don't think they can pick up. But they don't have to accept that fast samurai here, which is fine for us. We'd rather they waste it now than uh, having to deal with it when we're trying to find lethal. Um. But at this point, it's our second evil turn. We haven't picked up Carol, so the chances of us actually getting her union burst off is uh, low. So at this point, around this point, you probably want to switch over your strategy. So we go ahead and switch over to a Riley sent sent centric strategy at this point, so we want to invoke Riley as quickly as possible. Against what they have Painless Samurai, I mean not Painless, Staffa Samurai anyway, so um, going for Riley's, uh, going for the uh, Carol if Carol uh, OTK isn't even that reliable, so Riley is probably the safer bet here. So that's the Ivory Sword, let's go ahead and buff the Staffa Samurai, which is fine. We have a bunch of damage here, we have like a little bit of healing, but not too much, so. Draw another Riley. Um, we do want to play Mysterious Wisdom at some point, but right now we don't really have the time to do it. We're gonna play the tree here. Evolve this guy just to uh, get enough attack so that we can use a Clash of Heroes to clear the uh, Pain of Summer. That's not some, right? Uh, we could also consider using Mysterious Wisdom next turn, but I don't want to take that much damage. So. Unfortunately, we are still at 6. There's a Twin Sword as Master from them, and we're gonna evolve the. Uh, Yafen, Yafen Har. I don't know how to pronounce the thing's name, so... Yeah. Nicole can just go Y here, which is fine for us. We finally have time, so we're going to go ahead and put Riley back into the deck. And, uh, Pyromancer clears this deck quite easily. And then, um... We could have to use a Mysterian Missile and save our evil point here, but as you can see, we are still at 6 tree space, so we definitely want to find time to play a tree here, so we can do that. So that we can start invoking Riley to punch them in the face for uh, hopefully lethal. There's the area here, my opponent's not at 5 evil, so unfortunately for me, uh, I don't have to worry about the area that much. So there's the Riley here, we definitely want to send it face here. Um, here I go ahead and use the Mysterian project to clone Apex Elemental. It's very efficient removal for us. For 1 PP it deals 3 damage, so we go ahead and clone that just so we have ways to remove their followers, especially since we are now out of. Uh, uh, evil points, we need ways to clear their followers. We'll go ahead and uh, get rid of Dawn Splendor here. Put out another tree. And uh, the reason why we set up a tree here is because, as you can see, we are at uh, 8 this eight plate now. So Riley's gonna hit them now. If they don't heal, they will be at 9 next turn, which means my next Riley will invoke at 9 and be able to field inch them off. So that's the goal. So we go ahead and uh, play one more tree here and then hit Dawn Splendor to prevent like uh, any uh, insanity coming out from the tiger or like any There's the uh, Zephyr Samurai from them, that's fine. 
and there's Pepper Room as well. Uh, Aria was the most uh, concerning card they could have played, but thankfully no Aria here, so let me go ahead and hit us here, which is fine. We just have Vito with the next Riley, so that's uh, it for this game. Let's move on to the next game. So uh, last game for today, we are going second again. And apparently all my games are just going second. We are going against Dragon here. So here I open the Carol and I just go ahead and keep the Carol. Um, Carol does work against Dragon. They don't really have that many good ways to... I mean, they have like one... They Most of their wards come in once with Viridium Magna basically. And we can use Clash of Heroes to clear that. So um, the Carol OTK is quite effective against Dragon. So we just go ahead and try to... Do that by keeping the carol here. We pick out a Mysterian project here. So actually we can start looking at a uh, triple carol uh Exodia Lethal here. And we pick out another carol here. So, yeah, so um at this point we basically uh as, as if they don't kill me by turn eight, they just die. So we can just go ahead and I'll focus yeah. now solely on surviving until turn eight with Carol. So we go ahead and copy the Carol here with the Mysterian project here. And now we can just play Carol, Carol, and then Carol, and then they die. We just have to work on the third Carol's Union Burst at this point, and then and work on surviving, and we should be fine. Open place there's a Pathfinder here, which is fine. Uh, we go ahead and uh, play Mysterium with them here. No reason to play the tree. I go ahead and put the... Uh... I should actually play the tree. I can play Pyromancer next turn, so maybe that was a misplay on my part, but thankfully... Uh... Oh, I don't know. I was keeping the... Sorry, let me... Uh... I was trying to keep followers in my hand because I need followers to evolve for Carol. So I kept the follower in my hand, but I'm not sure if that was even a good idea, so... Yeah, we go ahead and just play Mr. Missile here. And then we play the uh, Golem just to uh, put something on my board for my opponent to interact with here. So, um, here is an interesting... I mean, there's no reason to evolve right here, so we just keep the play Golem here. I'm gonna play some Karen Great Tree here. Fine. Another Great Tree. It looks like they're looking for like key parts. They go ahead and wildfire Tyranno to the sky, and then there's a whirlwind of Tyr Tyranodon, which is fine for us. So, our turn, we don't really care about our great tree count, but I mean, we might as well use it, I guess. We try to draw healing or stuff to help us survive. Removal would be helpful, so we go ahead and play the tree here just to draw into our deck. There's no reason to do it or to not do it. And you go ahead and use Apex Elemental here. So, this is a. Uh, I would say that this turn was probably a misplay. I probably shouldn't have played the done that. So um, for me, when I was playing this turn, what I was thinking about was saving the evil point. But there's no reason to do it because next time I'm evolving Carol, the turn after that I'm evolving Carol, and then the turn after that, uh, Carol will be at Universe Eight, which means that it will be active anyway. So um, I've already have, and then like there's no way for them to survive the third Carol. So like in the first place, there is no necess necessity to save my evil point here, so I could have just used it. Another point of saving the evil point here is that it puts this thing at a for attack. Now if you think about me playing Carol next turn, evolving Carol, um, the most problematic thing for them to do is put out a follower that Carol's evolve effect cannot clear. Like for example, if they play Valdane next turn, and then trade it into this guy, and then play Valdane's spell, Next time I will evolve Carol, and then I wouldn't be able to clear Valdane with Carol's effect. I have to trade the Carol. And then when I trade the Carol, the Carol dies to the Bane, which leaves me an empty board. Gives them free brain to play whatever they want, and then I'm stuck playing Carol the next turn. So if they play something that Carol can't answer the following turn as well, then I'm kind of screwed. And there, that way I would actually be able to somehow lose the game uh, by turn before turn 8. So um, by evolving this... Oh, the other thing, uh, uh, the other possibility is Viridia Magna. So Viridia Magna, same problem. Uh, when they trade here, it will leave a 0-4 with Bane on board. Carol can't clear with the Evolve effect, so I have to trade my Carol. And then uh, if I do that, uh, like once again, the same problem, I leave my board open. And then they would be able to summon another Viridia Magna on the end of their next turn, which is uh, another way I can lose the game. So honestly, the correct play probably would be just to Evolve and trade this. Um, the other thing to note is that... Uh, uh, keeping the Apex Elemental is pretty valuable here because um, turn 6, I mean turn 6 is fine, turn 7 I play Carol, right? And then I have 1 PP left over and if my opponent has something I can't clear, I can just use Apex Elemental to clear that. So for that reason, uh, I probably should have kept the Apex Elemental in hand, but uh, yeah, they have a miss, well, they have a misplay on this turn, so yeah, I definitely should have evolved and traded instead of play wasting my Apex Elemental, so... Yeah, um, my opponent plays Shiva here, which I did not account for, but again, this is the same problem. If they evolve the Shiva here and trade, I actually can't even, like, clear the Shiva with Carol, because Carol's, uh, 
uh, evolves for only 5 attacks, so... I actually can't clear this if they evolved and traded, but thankfully they didn't. So uh, my misplay didn't get punished, so we go ahead and evolve the Carol here. Then we go ahead and evolve the Carol. Just to clear the Shiva here, which is fine. Trade. So uh, Carol on board is fine because... Um, Apparently, my opponent plays weird cards like Horror Force, Triceratops, so go ahead and clear my Carol. Yeah, there's a Pathfinder from there as well. At this point, they don't have a. Uh, uh, at this point, I think I just win the game, so. Go ahead and play Carol here again. Drop them down to 10, and then we just evolve her. Now, Carol's. Uh, now, my last Carol's Union Burst is actually single. So dead. We go ahead and trade here. Uh, unless they can deal 18 damage this turn, they are just dead, so uh, this is basically GG, so we just have to watch them. Struggle in vain, I guess, so we'll go ahead and play for Bane here, and they go ahead and evolve their Val Bane. It's fine, it's definitely way too late for Val Bane to do anything. Right here, go ahead and play Shadow Fall Illusion, and then for will win as well. I wish we get a decent amount of damage from this uh, Val Bane, but uh, we'll just play Carol and the game is over, so that's GG. Uh, so that's all the games I have for you today. Obviously, it's not the most consistently strong deck ever. It's definitely super weak to aggro as well. So, um, it's like a fun deck, I guess. It's pretty fun, actually. And there's a decent amount of decision making to be made. And I like that you have multiple win conditions in either Riley, Carol, or both. So yeah, uh, somehow managed to get enough games to showcase uh, all possible win conditions with this deck, so that's pretty fun. So that's it for today. Uh, I guess you can try this deck if you want. It's a bit on the expensive side though, so maybe you don't want to spend the uh, vows. Actually, it's not even that expensive. It's just Carol and Apex Elemental for Legendary. So maybe you can try it if you want. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. See you next time. Bye-bye.